So I just finished watching FLCL, or as the top tier weebs call it, Furi Kuli, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was pretty good. If you were looking for an analysis of the show about its plot elements or about its themes, this isn't the right place for you. If you want that, I definitely recommend Goat Jesus' video on the subject, which I will link in the description below. It's a really good video about the coming of age aspects of this story. However, what stood out to me about the story was the soundtrack. This is one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard, and it is, I believe, the best part of this show by far. Now, this soundtrack is different from a lot of soundtracks in that the vast majority of the music was made before the show. I've seen other people talk about this show saying that it's almost like a six episode long music video, and, and in a lot of ways, I actually agree with that assessment. Now the music in this is from the Japanese alternative rock group called The Pillows. Now the thing with The Pillows' music is that it's very stripped down. It's not complex, it's quite simple, it has a fairly simple song structure. Most of the songs are verse chorus, verse chorus, bridge chorus, or something similarly typical. But they still manage to distinguish themselves from a lot of other um, alternative rock bands. The Pillows manages to be so good for a number of reasons, but one of them is really simple. It's just how catchy their guitar riffs are. You know, just a good guitar riff in and of itself can save a track that is typical in its song structure. You know, if you have typical song structure, you probably want a really good riff. But there, there are other elements to this that, that make it work so well. The guitar solos that go over the bridges in a lot of these tracks are great. See, a lot of the time with tracks like these, the guitar solo will just simply mimic the vocal line that goes throughout the song, and while that can be interesting and while that can work well, it's really, really great to hear some very creative decisions being made in these interlude moments because of the typical nature of the song structure when you have, when you have these different moments, they stand out even more because you aren't expecting a guitar solo, first of all, that's gonna be this good, and second, that is going to play off of different musical themes so well and incorporate a variety of different tones. They don't just wank with their guitar solos, they aren't just showing off how well they can play their instrument. They are specifically making guitar solos that fit very well with these tracks. Really listening to this, it just feels like an amalgamation of a lot of my favorite bands and bands that I listened to a lot when I was a teenager. Radiohead, The Offspring, Nirvana, just great bands with a lot of elements of their style thrown into the mix that work very well together. And that's part of the reason why this works so well with this show, because this is a show that is about a coming of age story. And this feels like the soundtrack of my life when I was younger. This is the type of stuff I listened to. This is the type of stuff I enjoyed. And it really manages to hit that note of talking about what it's like to grow up. Part of that also is how the music is mixed. The music is mixed in a very open way. There's lots of space. Nothing is overly compressed or overly equalized. There's room for dynamics in here. And because of that, when something's not overly produced, it does sound more honest. Of course, you want something to sound clean. You want something to sound smooth. But with songs like White Ash or Stalker Goes to Babylon, you don't want it necessarily to sound clean. You actually want it to sound fairly industrial and kind of manic in its tone and in its aggressiveness. But this aggressiveness works really well because a lot of the times with aggressive songs like this, they can just become muddy because the mixing is too compressed. Everything is in the same musical space in the same in the same audio range. But in this, everything has its own spot in the mix, even when it gets intense. Some of these songs have lyrics that are quite moving that are interesting, that are meaningful. But there isn't any pretense to the music. These aren't these grand, melodramatic pieces. These are very open, very vulnerable pieces. And that is communicated through the song structure, through the mixing, through the vocals. The vocals in this, sometimes they go off pitch a bit, sometimes they crack a bit, sometimes they move out of focus, you know, they aren't, they aren't perfect, but that makes them better. If this was a smoothed out vocal line where things had been auto-tuned to shit, uh, where pitch correction had been liberally added, that would only make this experience worse because this needs to sound vulnerable. This is a show about a young man 
trying to discover who he is, trying to find his place in the world. And if that's all overproduced, if the vocals don't sound vulnerable, it's going to sound pretty disingenuous. Overall, I just wanted to communicate how great this soundtrack is and how great these songs are individually. I hope that if you liked the sound of this, you'll try listening to the soundtrack or that you'll try listening to some of the Pillows' albums because I think they have over 20 studio albums. And from what I've heard so far, it sounds like they're pretty consistent and they're very, very good. So if any of those similar bands I listed are things you enjoy or if this just sounds like something you might enjoy, definitely check them out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a bit of a shorter one, a bit less structured than I normally do. But, you know, if you enjoyed this and you're new here, uh, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that. Thank you. I hope that you have a great day. Bye-bye.